Let's look at how to handle logical operators in JavaScript. It sounds a bit scary, but actually it's fairly straightforward. So after this presentation, you'll appreciate Boolean values and what they mean in JavaScript, and also how to manipulate them, logical operators. These are the different bits of JavaScript we're going to look at. And so, Boolean. That basically means true or false. Right, so if you have a variable which has a Boolean value, that is a Boolean variable. It either has true or false. Now, what about manipulating and checking, testing these true or false values? Well, there's three ways to test and check and manipulate them, and they are called AND, OR, and NOT. Now, just to be extra clear that this is about true or false, People often say logical and, logical or, logical not, uh, as opposed to general English or something like that. And, or, or not. These things work with those Boolean values, which have true or false. So let's go through them. First one, and, logical and. You're going to test two inputs, two inputs that are true or false. The result, if you do logical and, checking those two inputs is true if both of the inputs are true. Otherwise, the result of logical AND is false. All right, example helps to make this clearer. Um, sometimes people summarize it in this kind of diagram, which is called a truth table. This is the possible first input, this is the second input, and then this is the result of logical AND. Those are the possibilities. Uh, false, 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 true, true, false, true, true. Those are the possible input combinations. And this is what you'll get coming out. And basically, in a quick English summary, if both inputs are true, the result is true. Otherwise, the result is false. That's the way I remember it. So, here's some examples. Here we have three variables, not even two variables, but three variables which are working together. These are Boolean variables because they have true or false. And don't think that this is anything to do with text. It's nothing to do with text. It's just these special words, true or false. So we have three variables and one of them has false and then true and then true. So we have a kind of fun example here. And the idea is, is life fantastic? Is life fantastic? Life is fantastic if... And here's the logic here. Life is fantastic if you are rich and, logical and, you have a partner, girlfriend or boyfriend, and you have a flat or a house. Okay, if all three of those are true, then the result of logical and is going to be true. In other words, life is going to be fantastic. So, what happens if you run this code? What will you see? You'll see a message come up and that message will be life is fantastic is false. All right? If you run this code and you get to here, you're going to get a result of false, which is a bit disappointing. Life is not fantastic at the moment. Why? Because remember, logical and gives you a true result when the inputs are true. But we have one input which is not true. Right? So we've got two inputs which are true, one input which is false. So that's this input here. You are not rich. That means that life is not fantastic because you need all the inputs to be true for the results to be true. Now, what happens if we change that variable? You are rich. Let's change it. Now, you are rich is true. Okay, let's do our test again. Life is fantastic is you are rich, logical and you have a partner, logical and, you have a flat. Test them all together, losing logical and, and look at the result. Now the result will be true because the second one is true, the third one is true, and now the first one is also true. Remember, all inputs must be true for the result to be true with logical and. Okay, so that's our first little example. Now there's... Um, an interesting feature with JavaScript and also some other programming languages. Let's say it is going to do a test 
uh, something, logical and something. If that first part is the result of some code, like here, there's some code giving us the first part, and also there's some code giving us the second part, then JavaScript does a clever thing. It says, okay, something logical and something. So it knows, well, both inputs must be true for the result to be true. So if the first input is true, then it will continue and do the second input because both inputs must be true. So what does that mean? Here, we'll get this message here and also we'll get this message here. This one returns a true, so that is the same as true. So it must continue and do the second test as well. It runs the second code and that runs false and then we get an answer. So here, both these functions are executed. Now, interesting, surprising thing. What happens if you swap them? So let's do this one, logical and this one. Now this first one is a false result. Now JavaScript's clever, it says, well, hang on, the first input is false, and I know that both inputs must be true for the result to be true, so I know straight away, I don't even have to look at this, I don't have to run this, and it knows the result will be false. So, surprising thing, it doesn't even execute this. This function here is not even executed at all in any way, because the first part was giving it a false, so it knows it's going to waste its time. Now that can be a bit surprising. Here it's just a kind of funny little thing, but if this is doing some serious work, maybe you know accessing a database, updating variables, something like that, then you may not realize that function is not executed at all, because the first thing returned the false. So, you have to be a bit careful when you do programming. Okay, let's go on to logical or. So, logical or, this is how you type it, two lines in JavaScript. Logical or is different to logical and. Logical or, the result is false if both inputs are false. Otherwise, the result is true. Okay, that's different to and. And again, you could summarize it like this. Those are the possible combinations going in to the OR, and then there's the result. And again, if both inputs are false, the result is false. Otherwise, the result is true. Okay, so here's an example. And now we're going to try to find, is life good? We're not saying, is life fantastic? Life fantastic, the previous example, three things had to be true for life to be fantastic. This one, no, we just, we're not being greedy. We're just trying to get one of these things to be true. Uh, one, of, one of these things to be true. So we're using logical or, if any of them is true, one is true, or two is true, or three is true, great. Then if we do logical or, life will be good. And that will be true if one or more is true. So let's do a test. You are rich, or you have a partner, or you have a flat. If one of those is true, then the result will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. So is one of those true? Yes, the second one is true. Unfortunately, the other two are not true, but the second one is true. So if we run this line of code, and then we check the result, we are going to get a true coming out. Life is good. Yes, we're going to get a true. Because one or more of them were true. So the result is true when you use logical or. All right, now what happens if something happens, you lose your girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, and now you have partner is false. Oh, well, now we have false, 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 because that second one has changed. We do our check again. Check the first input or second input or third input. If any of them is true, the result is true. But now all of the inputs are false. So now the result of this is false. Life is good. No, that is false now. And if we check the result, that will come up with a false. Because all of them are false. You don't, you're not rich, you don't have a partner, and you don't have a flat. Life is good is false. All right. 
Now, what about that funny thing that we saw before, which is called a short circuit? Is there a similar thing with OR? Yes, there is. So here's an example program, and we're testing one item or another item. So it does apply. It's a similar idea. Remember, both inputs must be false for the result to be false, because we're dealing with logical OR. So what happens if the first one is true? If the first one is true, then there's no need to do the second one. It's a waste of time. So it will not do this second piece of code. It will not do this at all. It won't even start it because both inputs must be false for the result to be false. And the result is true in this example. So I know the result is going to be true because it's logical or. So this will not be executed at all. So you have to be a bit careful about that if you're doing some programming. All right, what about not? We've looked at and or. The other one is not, and you write it like this in JavaScript, exclamation mark. Very simple, it does the opposite. So if you give one input, because it only uses one input, and then you do not, logical not, then you're going to get the opposite. Give it a false, it gives you a true. Give a true, it gives you a false. It gives you the opposite. So here's a simple example, some variables. Let's say you are male is true, just for example. Then, what about you are female? Well, logically, if you are male, then you are female is false. But we don't have to write the word false. We could say you are female is opposite, is not of you are male. Okay? You are female is not you are male. Now, the clever thing about that piece of code is if I edit the code, I change this to false, then immediately this one will be automatically updated. I don't have to change this line of code at all because it is guaranteed to be the opposite of this value. So that's the clever part of using logical not. In this example, it will automatically make sure that this variable, you are female, is always correct. If this is true, you are female will be false. If this is false, you are female will be true. All right, that's the end of our discussion about Booleans in JavaScript.